know thyself. It said, man, know thyself. If you ever took a philosophy class, you know, it goes deeply into what, what does it mean to really know yourself? And someone might say, well, that's so simple, you know, to know yourself. I already know myself. I know that I like, you know, chocolate ice cream. I know, what, you know, what type of clothes I, I like to wear. I know my favorite cologne or my favorite perfume or my favorite, you know, musical artist. I know myself. Uh, Rudra explained it wonderfully in the movie. This book also comes with a documentary where Brother Rudra breaks that down. But see, what people don't understand is that it's a, it's a two meanings to knowing yourself. Because there's two aspects to yourself. This is why a person is called the individual duality or individual. It's an individual duality. There's two parts of you. First of all, you have the higher self and the lower self. You have the physical and the spiritual, but you also have the personality and the self. This is why when you reach certain levels of self-actualization or self-realization, you become enlightened as well when you deal with psychology. But the person or the personality is your likes and your dislikes. Your religion, because your religion is something you picked up by being born in a certain family, in a certain, co in a certain country. So therefore, your religion is something that is learned. You're learned, uh, uh, or you pick up from society, you know, your, your cues on your social behavior. You pick, you pick up from society <coughs> and your culture and your ethnicity, you know, the, the certain types of foods that you eat, you see. Uh, you go certain places in the deep south, they won't eat any Chinese food. Because it's, a, you know, they have it in their mind that it's nothing but cats and dogs. They stick to strictly soul food. You go to certain places, it's strict because they are regimented and deeply rooted in that particular culture. Alright? Same thing with religion. If you were raised in a certain family and you believe so hard and so strong in that religion... Uh, it's because you were raised in that. If you were raised across seas in Afghanistan, you would, you would be just as devout a Muslim that you, than you are a Christian. The only reason why we adhere to certain religious beliefs is because that's what we were groomed and raised in. That's all dealing with the person. Your likes, your dislikes, your hopes and aspirations, all the things that deal with being a physical being here on the planet Earth. It's your personality, your, your, your ways and actions, how you are. Okay, all of this is dictated by you uh, incarnating here on the planet. That's the person. But there's a whole other side of you called the soul. The soul is uh, untampered with. It's not programmed by society. It's not programmed by beliefs. It doesn't have hopes, wishes, aspirations, and all of these particular things because the soul is your true pure self is God in you it is totally self-actualized so when it talks about man know thyself it's talking about the deeper aspects of the self not the personality this is why this book is called the hidden not the hidden person <laughs> but the hidden self because it's all about tapping into that indwelling intelligence which is another name for the self uh, scientists have discovered that there's actually uh, hidden dimensions and hidden crevices within the DNA molecule which is leading scientists in Russia, they did this research. Scientists now uh, are speculating, it's quite obvious, the mathematics uh, clearly indicates that we must exist on more than one dimension all at the same time. Quantum physics tell us that atoms themselves are flickering in and out of existence at tremendous speed. Because the simple fact that that same atom exists across all nine dimensions at the same time, blinking back and forth. Okay? But it appears that it's just in one place. But when our tools of observation continue to become more sophisticated and sensitive, our knowledge of reality is going to be turned upside down. We're going to see that we live in many different dimensions. There's many different aspects of the self. Just like the ancients have told us. Ancient Egypt tells us that we have seven bodies. You don't have just have one body. You read the scripture, the Bible tells you that there's seven heavens. You go deeper into the esoteric teachings and the Gnostic teachings and the non-Kamadi texts. 
uh, it talks about the seven heavens subdivided by seven. Okay, we also have seven uh, spiritual centers, crown to the root. Okay, heart chakra, root chakra, solar plexus chakra, third eye chakra. Chakra simply means wheels. So that's all speaking as well to the seven heavens and the seven gates. See, this thing is much, there's so much more to the spirituality and these teachings than you're going to get going to church. Absolutely, because it's meant to just give you the basic, you know, motivational speech and the basic information, uh, morality, which is the lower mysteries. But Jesus said, there are many things I've come to teach you, but you can't bear them yet. So if that's the case, then all the things in the Bible, he has much, much, there's much more information. This is why we're here today to bring and reveal this information, uh, this more esoteric information, as well as the fact that this uh, information is uh, openly ready, you know, and, and, and uh, available to the public. But just going more into the hidden self, uh, we know now that our whole reality is nothing but a mirror reflection of our inner state of mind, our inner state of heart, our frequency vibration. Because our thoughts create our reality. If you're constantly thinking negatively, always a, a worrisome type of person, and you charge it with emotional energy, and you focus on negativity, and you run negative images of what could happen in your mind, you're doing a ritual against yourself. And what's going to happen is eventually you're going to bring that to yourself. So when we have this knowledge, we should begin to understand that we need to vibrate on a frequency that is very high if we are to experience a reality that is full of you know, joy and peace and success and love and health, vitality. We have to raise the frequency of our thoughts. We have to raise the frequency of our feelings and our emotions and be very wise about the images that we run in our mind, the uh, movies that we play in our mind. Okay? It's very, very important. This book goes into all of that. So, the question you would ask yourself is, do I like what I see? Do I like what I see in my life? Do I like my job? Because that's where we spend most of our waking hours, okay, at the job, working. And we spend the other eight hours sleeping. So if you don't like your job and what you do in your life path, get out. Absolutely get out because it's, life is too short. Life is absolutely too short to waste it away sleeping and slaving. Absolutely. You might as well be not too far above a chipmunk. or, In fact, animals, they spend all of their life basically foraging for food and, and watching out for predators. Okay, in order to graduate to higher levels of our humanity and eventually to our divinity, we have to get out of survival mode. It's not about survival. It's about thriving and living on purpose. Thriving and living on purpose with a purpose. Not just, where am I going to get my next acorn? Like a squirrel. Where am I going to get my next meal? You know? The Messiah, the Master Teacher, told us that, you know, you know, the animals, they don't fret over where they get their food. They know who their provider is, you see. Birds don't worry, oh man, where am I going to get the next worm? Okay? If we get on purpose, and I'm not telling you to run out and just, you know, quit your job. <laughs> what I'm telling you is to live on purpose and get to a place where you can be on a frequency of Zion when you are engaged in your everyday practices. It's very important because it's all about frequency. You can't raise to a higher frequency if you're doing something and you're constantly unhappy and you're not living on purpose, you know, on assignment, in alignment with why you were put on this planet. You, you, there's no way you can because the, it doesn't match. You have to have a very, a very high frequency of joy and of fulfillment and of, of contribution and of, of, of belonging, okay? Giving your gift. We are all uh, were a gift to the earth, okay? Jesus said, 
These things I do, ye shall do even greater things. And he was supposed to be a gift to the world. So if we are to do greater things than him, we need to step up to our power. Step up to our power and start to manifest and really tap into the reason and the purpose why we are here. Okay? That will raise your frequency. So get to know who you are. Really get to, get to know who you are. We talk about meditation. And meditation, all it really is is getting still. Turn off the phone. Turn off the Wi-Fi in the house. Turn everything off. Be still. Quiet your mind. Turn off the internal dialogue, the constant conversation we have with ourselves. Always asking questions, answering questions, asking questions. Always talking, 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 blah, 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 blah. You know, you see certain people, it's like that cell phone is glued to their head. They just cannot, they just talking nonstop. They talking going to work, they talking at break, they talking going home. All the while, not only is their mind in a constant state of brainwave, waves, waves, but those frequency waves constantly impacting their skull, scrambling their brain, actually lobotomizing them. Okay, that's that's the whole technology is to take away consciousness right here on your central lobe. This this frontal lobe, it says in the scriptures that the mark of the beast was written in the hand and in the forehead. So when, when you look at the hand, what's in everybody's hand? The smartphone. Okay, you put it to your head and it lobotomizes your cerebral cortex. This is real deal conscious information and the Most High never leaves us without guidance and without those to help us show to show us the way. So always being on the cell phone, never stopping and going within, always got to be around people, stop, let go, go within because what happens is it's all a form of distraction. When's the last time you commune with your own soul? Okay? When you commune with your soul, now you're communing with the part of you that is not programmed by society. See, people say, I'm loud because my mama's loud. I'm loud because all of the females in my particular ethnic group are loud. Or all the women in my particular community are loud and boisterous and, you know, these, this type of thing. Or I'm rude because of... No, 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 you're not. You are choosing that. You are choosing to follow that script. You could just as easily choose not to. But you're not aware of that choice until you go within and tap into the part of you that is not programmed and conditioned. So I'm going to stop right there. That was chapter one. Knowledge of self. Okay, knowledge of self. Knowledge is the foundation. Okay, without knowledge there is no wisdom or understanding. You have to know who you are. Absolutely. And to let you know, we have the Hidden Self now as a, as a download. I just contacted the web designer. He put it as a download so you can get it instantly at nazirod.com. Download the entire book and you can follow along with the videos. So peace and love. I love you so much. I hope, you, I, hope I gave you a little you know, uh, food for thought, if you will, to go within, to, to try to tap into the unconditioned part of yourself, the soul, tap into that part of you that is not programmed by society, the, the part of you that is from the divine, the pure soul, because therein lies the kingdom. Peace and love.